Hello, welcome to the GitHub Beginner's Guide. So here, I'm assuming that you've done a little bit of coding, you've done, made some projects maybe in HTML and CSS, and you've been told to use GitHub or you wanted to start to explore GitHub and what it can offer you as a developer. So I'm assuming that you haven't used GitHub before, maybe you've signed in, but you've got stuck. So let's get started using GitHub. So first of all, you need to sign up if you haven't already done so, or else just sign in. So I'm going to sign in because I'm already signed up and I'll see you inside. Okay, so once you're logged in, you'll be presented with this screen. So ultimately here, to start off, we need to, need to make something called a repository, which is essentially a project, a project folder. So if you're building a website, that's one project that would go into a repository. So let's create a new repository for our project. So I click on create repository and then I need to give the repository a name. So I'm just going to call this project one and description, a new project. This can be changed later. Repository names can be changed also, but it's not recommended. And you've got then two options here, public and private. So public means that your code when you upload to your repository can be viewed by anyone. And private means you can choose who sees it. Now, if you're obviously working in teams and um, you don't want people to access your code because it's a, a work project of some sort, and then obviously private is what you need. In order to use private, as a student, you can sign up for GitHub student package and you can access private repositories. Um, else you'll need to pay uh, a monthly subscription fee and then be able to access um, private repositories. But for now, we're just going to be using a public repository as we're just testing and starting to use GitHub. So once we've done that, um, we select public and I'm going to select initialize this repository with a readme and then I'm going to select create repository. Okay, so yeah, we built a new repository. So basically this is a, a project area where we can store project files. Think of it that way to begin with. So now what we need to be able to do is upload and download files from this project area, this repository. So we can do that in many ways, but um, GitHub offer us a desktop app. <coughs> oh, excuse me, GitHub app. Um, God, let's type in desktop app, shall we? Desktop. Uh, Desktop.github.com. So we can download this. I'm using Windows, so I'm just going to use. Uh, the Windows downloader, of course, but if you're using OS, Mac OS, um, there is also a version for you. So we download this and we will then install onto this computer. Okay, so once downloaded, I'll just close that and open it up in the download section. <coughs> so here we go. Uh, so this is it here. So we just need to run this and it will install it onto your computer. So once this piece of software is installed, You'll just need to log in. So you're going to use the same login details as if you're um, logging into github.com. So this will be installed fairly quickly. And now we need to sign in. So go ahead and sign in and there'll be a, a separate page. Just press confirm. And then that should take you to where you'll find be next. OK, so that places us right here. So I've logged myself in and press the, the next button or confirm. And it takes me to this page here, so you can uh, select this or not and press finish. And that should take you to this page here. So if you have already followed the start of this guide, which I presume you have, you've already created a project. Mine's called project one or repository, sorry, repository called project one. So what we need to do now is um, kind of a match up or um, we need to clone this repository from here um, and copy it to our, our computer. And then we can start um, adding files to this repository. Repository. So we select this uh, clone repository from the internet option. Obviously, we've only got one repository. You may have more than one project. And this is where it's going to save it. Now, that might not be useful for you because ideally where you want to save this repository is potentially where you're developing. 
potentially. So I'm going to um, go and uh, go to my desktop and make a new folder. And this is where I'm building. This is where I happen to be building a new project. So I'm going to call this um, my new project. <clears throat> and uh, so I go back and choose to clone, but obviously I want to save it in this folder here. So there we go. So that's saved in there and I press clone. Once I've selected my repository, of course. Um, so that's going to claim from the, the internet. Obviously there's nothing to cl clone at all because it's just an empty folder. And there we have it. So the idea here is that um, we can keep the online repository the same as um, our development area. So here I'm just going to, um, <clears throat> this is our re repository, project one. So inside of here, we've got the readme file. Um, so I'm gonna make a new file. Uh, let's just, let's just, well, actually, I'm gonna open this up in my um, code editor. So I'll go to file, open folder, and we know it's on the desktop. It's a new project, project one. So that's our repository that's online. I select that folder. So now I'm kind of working in that folder. So project one folder. So what I can do is make a new file, uh, index.html, happy days. And then I can just build a, a simple page. Hello world. Press save. So as soon as I press save, what you're going to find is if I go back to um, GitHub desktop, you can see that one file changed. So this is tracking um, the changes that I'm making. That's important. And there's a reason why it does that. So the, my point is here, I just want to show you how to get these changes onto your um, online repository. So at the moment, this is just locally stored. So here I can um, First of all, create a description of what's happened. Made a new file. There we go. So when I do update my online repository, I know why I've updated it because I made a new file and you can see what the changes are here. So what I do is I need to press commit to master. That's going to store everything locally still. But once I've done that, when I'm happy, um, that when I'm happy with the changes that I've made, um, what I can then do is push to origin. So that's going to actually take the files and the changes that I've made, and it's actually then going to store it onto the um, GitHub online tool that we saw earlier. So I press, press push to origin. We wait for it to um, upload. And then we go back to our um, project again. This is what it looked like. I'm going to press refresh. And you can see now I've got the index file there. So that's the, the basics of um, GitHub um, in terms of a tool for saving um, your project online. So what's important to understand in uh, the most basic sense is GitHub is a version control and collaboration tool. So imagine you're making this project here and um, <clears throat> this is a website for a client, for example. You've made the website and then you've uploaded it to GitHub. Um, so that's all working perfectly. And for example, now your client has asked you to build something new um, for this project. Now, of course, what you might want not want to do is uh, go ahead and start building and then I start uploading it to the to the master branch because the master branch is referring to in this case maybe the branch um, that's working. So this code here, this is the branch. Um, this is all working absolutely perfectly. So maybe what you do is you copy this version or this branch or this um, project, and you make a new branch. And the idea then is for you to to work on that new branch until you get to a point where you've tested everything. And then when you're happy with that branch, you then make it into the master. And then of course that website gets updated and is utilizing that version. 
So for example, maybe um, we create a test branch. So we're going to create, uh, I've gone to this um, drop down here, I've typed in test and you can now see that what's happened is it's copied everything from master and now I'm in the test branch and you can see it looks exactly the same. So with that in mind, um, I've now um, working on this test branch. So what I can do now, like I said, if we wanted to update this project, but not touch the, the master branch, which we know is perfectly um, working, then we can just work with the test branch. So um, going back into our desktop app, um, what we need probably need to do now is instead of making a commit to the master, we want to uh, we want to use the test branch. So we need to uh, find a way of just refreshing. So you can see I've pressed here and it now refreshes this list. So now I can see the test branch. Excellent. So what I can go ahead and do now is in my project, maybe I'm going to make a new file, call that test.html. Uh, save that. And what probably going to happen now is, yep, you can see that one file has been changed, test.html. So I need to make sure that I'm working on my test branch. I then commit to my test and then I can push to the origin when I'm ready, of course. So that's going to upload <coughs> uh, to the online um, version here. So I just make sure that I'm select, selected the test branch and you can now see the test is there. But if I go back to my master branch, you can see that it's not there. So this idea of having this master branch where we know this piece of software is working. So for example, if you're working and uh, making a, an, a phone application possibly, um, or another piece of software, you know that this is working. And of course you're constantly updating the application or website and you do testing um, before you you then take that piece of code live. So you're working in a testing area and then you, um, uh, when you're ready, maybe you move it um, to master. So uh, that's uh, the general or a concept of um, uh, GitHub or utilizing GitHub um, and a version control system.